How do we feel heading into the draft? Yeah, really successful, you know, trade period and to be able to secure two picks in the first round, we're really pleased with. We held on to the first pick, 13. Um, top pick nine came through as a result of the Paddy Dangerfield deal. So to have two picks in the first round, you know, get some access to some high-end talent, we were, uh, we're really excited. Picks nine and 13, obviously, first time in the club's history we've had two in the first round. Um, happy with that result? Yeah, very happy. Um, extremely happy. I think, you know, with what we did with the trade period, bringing those, uh, those guys in that we needed to cover some needs. Um, our philosophy has always been you trade for needs and, and you draft your talent. So that'll be our, our process and our philosophy again at, uh, this, tra at this draft period. Um, obviously pretty keen to get your hands on some, some, some pretty high-end talent with those picks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the, the expectation is that those guys, you know, come with a potential capacity to play. Um, you know, fairly quickly, but that's not always the case. You know, you need to, to make sure that they've, they have an understanding of how to train um, an AFL environment. Um, there's quite a lot of work you often have to do with strength, particularly um, in that sense. And, you know, then there's the, the ultimate of learning a new game plan, you know, new teammates. So, but certainly there's, uh, there's some high-end talent available at those picks. Um, with picks 9 and 13, does, does, does positional needs come into it or is it, is it just, just best, best talent available? No, it's best, best talent. Um, that's the way that we've done it. We'll certainly run you know, across the needs of the club as well. So we'll keep a, an eye across that. But predominantly, you, you tend to use your trade period for that. Um, you have a bit more time to work out where your specific holes are in your list as you go through the... The years and, and look, we are a club that probably tries to work a number of years in advance of where we're at. So, very difficult for us to have an influence into next year's list um, in regards to what that looks like now. Uh, so, a lot of your planning goes around you know your future, and so therefore you go to the draft with, um, I guess, some potential ideal around um, making sure your needs of the future are covered a bit as well. But predominantly, it's about talent. Uh, we, we drafted or we traded in a couple of South Australians. Do, do you place a priority on SA talent, or do we just go whatever's available? Oh no, I think you go best talent. Um, you know, we've got a history of being able to do that um, and pick the talent. You know, in, in accordance to where it sits on your scale. Certainly, if there's a if there's a close call, we'd always love to go the local talent, um, and that's been shown by the way we've traded over the last period as well. But certainly, it's the idea is the best talent. It's a national competition, and you take the best talent from around the nation. Uh, in terms of the new bidding system, that's going to add a new element, uh, element to the night. How, yeah. will it, how will it affect us and how do you see the system? Yeah, look, I think the potential is with the bidding system that what people will notice is that where your pick starts at the beginning of the trade period may not necessarily end up where you actually have your selection. Um, clubs will be able to bid for talent through those academies. Uh, if a matching club then decides to take that talent, then your pick will potentially fall a bit further down the order. Um, so we're across that. It's, uh, it can, can tend to be a little bit complicated when you look at it, but the simplicity is that um, the academy clubs now have the right to take that talent. They have to match the bid where that bid comes in, which can potentially uh, push clubs' picks a little bit further down the order. Is it important to realise, though, for our supporters that that doesn't necessarily affect, we're still effectively getting the ninth and 13th best available talent to us. Yes. Because we don't really have access to those academy players. Correct. You can bid for the talent in those academies, but predominantly those talent, uh, those clubs with those uh, academies have taken that talent and worked with it for a number of years. So you would expect that those clubs would select that talent out of those academies. Uh, and so therefore, you know, the, the net result is that you're still looking at the talent in the order where we had them positioned. Uh, in terms of uh, between now and draft night, there's, a, there's only a few more days. Is there much yep. work for you guys and the recruiting team to be done? Oh, I think it's just the attention to detail now. It's just going over and making sure that you know, everything's in order. Um, there's a lot of information that still comes in even now um, in the next couple of days from the draft combine. Uh, there's still some bits and pieces that come through uh, even as late as the weekend. So. Uh, predominantly, I think you know, 95% of the work's already done. Uh, the list's pretty much set the order around where we think um, the group of players that we get will get access to is there. Um, uh, Don's been briefed. You know, our footy committee's had a briefing already. We'll probably have one more before the night. But yeah, predominantly, it's uh, most of it's done.